I'm Jessica Shaw. I'm so happy to be here with Lauren Graham. I mean, I was, I, um, anyone else watch all four in a row, like the second they drop? Yeah, okay. I was like, by family, responsibilities, all four in a row, and time well spent. Um, so Lauren, welcome. Thank you. And just, I mean, how does this feel? It's done, this is like, they're out. People are watching them. This has been so many years in, um, I mean, I was lucky enough to be on set, so I saw you while you were shooting. Um, and, you know, of course, the, the seven seasons of the show and then the time off and then coming back for this. And now, oh, how does it feel? <laughs> First of all, thank you all so much for coming out on such a miserable, miserable night. Um, uh, I, it's been so hard to describe how it feels that um, I wrote about it <laughs> because there's no simple answer, but the sh I guess the short one is it feels amazing. And, and, um, and also we have a candle, which I, <laughs> do you know about the candle? Uh, I, there's a candle that burns winter, spring, summer, fall, and you smell a different smell <laughs> for each season. So I'm still wrapping my mind around doing the show and, and having that experience. And then people are sending me things about a candle. So it's, it's very surreal, I guess. Uh, shout out okay. to the Netflix marketing department. <laughs> I, I right? Mean, I don't know. Did you get one? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first day like on set for the movies? I was shaking. I mean, it, it just was... Um, uh, we'd waited so long. We'd been asked this question. Uh, for years and years, um, the the deal making process was um, haphazard as they always are, and so there was kind of no time between understanding that this was going to happen and then the first day of work. Um, it was a matter of days, in fact, and um, so walking onto set just felt very shaky um, because I kind of didn't know what to expect. We, I hadn't been there, I hadn't walked the set, you know, we'd had table reads and one quick fitting, but um, I hadn't been in the house, I didn't know how it was gonna feel. Um, and, then, and then very quickly it normalized and it, and it felt like old times. Um, but I liken it, to, it's visiting your college campus, it's seeing a great love you haven't seen in a long time, it's, it's that kind of anticipation and then you kind of eventually relax. And when you spent so many years playing this character who has these very strong bonds with different people, whether, you know, with, with her mother Emily or her daughter Rory or Luke or, you know, whoever it is, how did you, and, and by the way, thank you everyone who submitted questions. I'm going to try to get to all of them, um, but shout out oh, to Are these Leo. questions from you guys? Yes, they oh, are. Oh, that's nice. Um, I, yeah. Not all of them. I wrote my own also. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. <laughs> But it's always in something like this where it's actors. I'm always interested in what people want to hear about, you know, because yeah. we've been talking about the sort of more general thing, and I think it's a very act. It's a very actor actory show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. But when you spend all all of that time and you build up that relationship and you're like, you know, playing in scenes against these people, and then you take all this time off. How was it to refine that intimacy? It's, you know, as any of you know who've done a play over a period of time and then maybe been asked to do it again or something, it's, you, it's just in, it's in your blood. And um, there are very particular dynamics that I spent so many years in that it's a physical um, kind of state. You know, there's a certain way I feel when I walk into my mother's house. You know, it's like, you know, there's a certain kind of like, what? Okay, I'll sit down. You know, there's just things that were born out of all those years of playing that dynamic. And of course, there's variation in it, but it takes on almost it, it, um, it takes on its own being, you know. And so that all of that was very, um, very easy. Did you go back and watch any episodes from the original series before you started this one? I uh, don't learn anything from watching myself. <laughs> um, and, uh, but in, I, I did have to because I wanted in, in the book to be able to compare kind of the experience the first time, which was I was pretty brand new in town. 
nobody knew season to season if we were going to be back. It sort of slowly got a, a group of, you know, got a following. We were on a little network. Um, we, you know, back in those days, we were shooting on film. The, a regular day was 16 hours. Um, so it's a blur a little bit and 22 episodes a year for seven years. So I kind of like fright, you know, afraid for my life <laughs> went back, started and um, here I have a, um, an old Roku box, which I don't even know how to work. So, you know, it wasn't like the seamless Netflix streaming experience. And, um, and I would kind of started going through them more to just see if it jogged my memory for anecdotes. And, you know, over the years, the internet has ranked the show, you know, it's, you don't need my like 10 best snack foods on Gilmore, you know, but, but I did want to feel like where was I at the time and kind of what was going on. And um, so, so I went through it that way. By the way, when Lauren's referencing her book, it's talking as fast as I can and it's out now. 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 So, and it's amazing. I've read it and, and, I, and it's, um, it's about your life, but also there's a lot like for Gilmore fans, there's so much fascinating stuff in there um, that well, I love. The, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go, please. The idea, I, I wanted the second time to be, be more present in the experience because I could, because we were back kind of, you know, by popular demand, and that's such a different experience than starting a project you have no idea if anyone will ever care about. And, and I, I was aware of all the questions I've been asked over the years, and didn't have an answer for, you know, what was your favorite scene? What did you take from set? And, and, and so this time, <laughs> they always want to know what you took from set. Um, as if we're all a bunch of thieves. But believe me, I took stuff from set this time <laughs> so that I'd have an answer. But purely so that I'd have an answer, it was a, nothing. I took a pink tin flamingo. I was like, I've loved you for years, flamingo. <laughs> I, I didn't, but, but um, so I, I just, you know, I kept a diary. Also, we had so many incredible guest stars and, and really some magical things that happened. The whole thing felt really touched, you know. I, I did, um, I hope this isn't like, you know, betraying some secret or whatever, but when I was on set and I got to see you riding around on your cute little bike that has a Braverman <laughs> little like bike license plate. And I was like, my worlds are colliding. <laughs> Imagine what it was like for me. Um, I always ride bike, a bike on the, on the back lots because, you know, they provide a van for you and I, I just never, I like the experience of just having a moment to kind of be by myself. And uh, I had this old bike on the show that by the end of the show was completely rusted, t t trashed. Like I had to just like let it go. And then our, our rap gift on parenthood were these beautiful bicycles. And I considered for, for again, m my sanity, I was like, do I leave the Braverman license plate on there? I get, you know, and then I did and I, 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 was biking by one day and a crew guy in another show was like, same bike? And I thought, wow, I've been here a long time. <laughs> I was like, different bike, same character, you know, so. Um, I, I did want to ask you, you mentioned like what it was like to walk onto, you know, the set and, and seeing the sets very lovingly recreated and, and some even from, from pictures and from watching the All show. All the pictures. There yeah. were no measurements. No one kept, it's not like the flats of a, you know, of a theater where they, they're just going to repaint it or something. They were completely gone, so yeah. they all had to be recreated from photos, right? And it, and, and it, the show from the show. And there would be things that, like, you all had been used to. You know, oh, I, I know I can walk this far up to the bar or up to a table, and then oh wait, there's actually like three more feet there. And you know, and I know uh, it was it was jarring, but I so jarring. Um, I think most of all, and something that. Um, it, you know, is so moving, and you see this huge portrait of uh, of Richard Gilmore of Edward Herman, and and um, and I remember sitting with you on set, and kind of with that picture right there, um, and I know it was it was just you know as much as it was, you were reunited with so many people. His his absence was felt tremendously. Felt tremendously. He gave me so much, and he he was an actor I was aware of from a very young age, just his presence is so specific and the way he looks and his voice. And, and um, he just took such, he had such love for that character, for that world, and he was so great to me. And he told such great stories and he would have loved coming back so much. Um, you could feel him, I mean, you could feel the, the 
whether it was him or the lack of him, you could, you know, he was there. And then you have the giant thing with his face on it. <laughs> and that was another day where, you know, we walked on and it was just, uh, uh, you know, just so, I mean, all these days were, I'm gonna have to take like a month in a home somewhere because it was, there was just so much, you know, so much emotion around coming back and around who was there and who wasn't there. And um, so we tried to honor him, I guess, as best we could. Well, you definitely did. Did you shoot this in chronological uh, with this? No, oh no. So one of the uh, difficulties of, of everything having to come together was we had a very limited time on the back lot. And of course, that's our town. And w when we started, Grease, the live musical was there. Um, and so we didn't, there was nothing. And, you know, these are these kinds of, these ghosts that the day the show got canceled, I had to go back to the lot to do some ADR or something and everything was gone. Like it's gone that fast. Um, and when we got there this time, no gazebo, no nothing, grease. You know, they had like, I don't know, uh, Ferris wheels and stuff, you know. And then suddenly you come back and it was snow on the ground. And, but they had to do them all. You know, you, you can't have snow on the ground one day and then, and then it's springtime. So we, we had to shoot the back lot first and shoot each season. So it was really, all over the map in terms of where we were in the story. And then kind of after that was done, we went and did all the interiors. I like the nod at the beginning of this first episode that everyone just saw of like, wow, it feels like we haven't, you know, yeah. it feels like it's been a while. <laughs> was that the first scene that you, that you two shot together? No. Um, part of that sequence, part of the walking, to, uh, walking and talking was, but um, that was, uh, a little, a little later, but it's still. I was very aware of, you know, very aware that this is the first time you see this character. Very aware of kind of, you know, I haven't seen Rory in a long time, um, so it was, it was a big day anyway. But how, as as an actor, do you kind of? I mean, you talked a little bit about, you know, that there have been so many years of anticipation, like press people mm -hmm. asking about da da da. How do you just wipe that from your head? When, when you made Gilmore years ago, it was like, you, like you said, it was on like this, you know, the WB, it was, it, it was no one, I, I think the original plan was for it to be on Thursdays, even against Friends. We were on Thursdays. Yeah, for like a minute, yeah. yeah. And it was, uh, you know, and, and now it's like the planet was waiting for it. You know, <laughs> it's just, it's a different level of, does that, is that going in your head? Only at the grocery store um, <laughs> where, you know, uh, people would come up to me, and it was actually really helpful, um, and say, you say I smell snow, right? And I think at that point, I'm not sure if I did, and, and so I came into work and I was like, I think I have to say I smell snow, you know? And, but there's so many things, because all these years of people watching it and re-watching it, they know it in a way, in most ways, certainly better than, than I do. Um, but we tried to take that in, and there was one morning I, I woke up and I thought, I don't know if I'm drinking enough coffee. Am I drinking enough coffee? You know, I have to, let's put more coffee. Like, so just things so that it felt seamless and familiar enough, you know, to, to, to us, but to the audience as well. Um, but really the way you get rid of all that is kind of the moment I turned the page because this was not only cooking for the people who were hoping to see it again or us, it was really cooking for our writer, for our writers. and. She, you know, she had been thinking about it and kind of uh, hoping or, you know, working on it in a way for so long and, and that it didn't feel to me thin. It didn't feel like unjustified, you know, to, to be back. It just felt like, come in, all the things are so sappy, but it's true. It just felt like kind of coming home. And that was, this was always such a, certain kind of fit for me that of all the things I love, um, and it struck me even more this time, how kind of theatrical the show is. You know, it really, you could lift these scripts and do them on stage. They're, they're a little heightened and they're a little, the language is, is so important. So that, that just like calmed it all down. <laughs> do you remember the, the, um, your audition for Lorelai? And was, the, was there like a specific scene that you had to read from the show or? 
Uh, I had to read the first scene where um, the guy mistakes me and Rory for friends, and um, and I remember. And back then, I was I had mainly done a lot of half hour comedy, and um, the way I'd gotten most jobs was to kind of kind of improvise a little around it and you know especially when you're starting out you're auditioning for these kind of small parts that don't have a lot of detail or texture and so I'd kind of throw something in you know and and so I went in and tried to give my thing and she was like um could you do it as written <laughs> and I was like okay but um you know and and that was that was the first day I learned I was in a very different world because that was every word is written every um every you know n nothing and once you give into that there's incredible freedom and once the the more i got to know amy the more i just heard i could hear what she wanted it you know i could hear what she's hearing when she's writing it mm -hmm. and we we have a great kind of mind meld that way and what was interesting to me is parenthood was a, a much more improvisational show and there was a relief in that. I was like, oh, finally, I can make stuff up like I always did. And then, I mean, it was written, but there was more freedom. But so having done that for a while, I craved this thing. I craved the, the structure again and the sort of athleticism of, of having to, you know, hold a longer sentence. And so it was kind of a perfect, uh, experience, you know, sort of last 10 years to have. And and just and the cadence. I mean, the like you know, you're like going all in. I mean, I th one of the questions was someone was wondering about getting back to that point of like speaking that fast and and it just you know it's it's like um, if you play the piano or something, you're not going to play a piece of jazz the way you play some musical theater. You know it because the music tells you, and and so no matter how, what you put into it, it's kind of there for you to you know, be creative, but you have the the map to follow. And that's what this is too. There's no, I don't necessarily have to adjust. Again, this is something I, I felt a strong connection to the minute I read it. And, um, and it tells you, you know, you just have to listen. There's a really beautiful moment that I, that I won't spoil because it's not in the first episode. I'm pretty sure it's in the fourth. I mean, like I said, I've watched them all in a row, so they're all sort of yeah. blended together. Mm -hmm. But uh, where Lorelai calls Emily and tells a story about uh, about her father. Mm. And it's it's one of those, and I think everyone who has seen all four, when you look back on the four movies, you think this is one of the moments of them. And it is mm. so beautifully acted and, and really, and I was wondering, um, if you can just talk about that. I, I, was at, I was at the table read when you read it for the first time, and it was, there wasn't a dry eye at a table table read, which are like real depressing rooms, guys. <laughs> like this was just like no windows of water and yeah. lined yeah. up. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, the so back on the old show, uh, Amy and I talked about kind of one unique thing about the show, and we did you know page count page eleven page scenes. You just don't have that in most TV shows, and and. In fact, rather than finding that um, annoying, I always said we should just, you know, push that on, push whatever this is that makes it unique. Wouldn't it be great to, I don't know, you know, do a crazy speech or whatever? But that has nothing to do with the. the um, there's something that happens in this episode where I mess up, and to me, what. What she gave me was the, the the perfect arc, like the perfect answer to this rift between Lorelai and Emily. Um, but the danger, of course, you know, is it's like it's like killing in dress rehearsal. Well, the New York Times wasn't there, so um, you know, and that's how like the table read felt. It was those rooms were very emotional, you know, and um, and then you know on the day you have to just be uh, available, you know, and um, do you do a lot of takes of something like that? My hope on that was to not do very many takes, and it, I have so I have a very long speech, and and it's very it's sort of a stream of consciousness sounding the way Amy's stuff sounds, but that's not how it's written, and um, 
So I did something I'd never done before, which was I just taped it very flat, like no acting. I just taped the words in on a you know voice thing, and, and in the car I would just play it because I didn't want to have to call for line. I didn't want to have to do too many takes. I just wanted to really get there. You know, sometimes with an emotional thing, you kind of ramp up, or you know, everybody has their own way. They kind of come at it, and this I just felt really particular, or like I just felt very. Um, I felt that this was the the right way to to do it without like squeezing it dry and 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 sort of torturing it. And we did two takes. Wow. <laughs> But that's nothing, don't be too, you know, it's just because I knew, you know, there's there's an ease, the kind of a casualness you can get sometimes in TV because you know they can cut, because you know you can go back, because somebody can give you the line and they'll cut it together as if, you know. So I prepared this just more the way you would a play, I guess. I, you're being modest. I will say you also have like a reputation of being like, you can give you like a, like a mile long page of dialogue and you memorize it and you're kind of. I recited poetry as a child <laughs> <laughs> to company and I'm sure they hate it every minute. But um, yeah, I, 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 can, I can pick it up pretty fast. But again, that's the good music of it. You know, the, 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 it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, but uh, once she learned that, <laughs> Early on in the show, the pages got longer and longer and longer. <laughs> she was like, oh, we can just give it to them at the last minute. They'll be fine. So it was a, mainly a blessing, but sometimes a curse. I think so much is, is um, talked about the way Lorelai spoke and everything. And I wanted to ask you about the physical side of her because there, it's something that um, I loved seeing in these movies. And there's, there's a scene that, that always stuck out for me from the original series where it's it was an open um, to the show and Lorelai and Rory are doing their morning routine of you know making coffee and putting whatever toast in the in the toaster oven and there are no words which is so rare for this show yeah. and it's one of the finest moments um, it's such a beautifully choreographed um, moment and and it's like Lorelai in, in exactly you know just in her physical self and it's so uniquely her mm -hmm. um, and I always love that moment and I and and I think like that you got some moments like that in this also like tell us about like kind of finding that her movement and the way she walks and I mean you know the way I'm slumping right now because I'm nervous is like never she do never she doesn't she doesn't sit that way everything's up you know everything's sort of like oh look over there oh wow I know here let's come over here it's order it's all sort of like a fun kind of you know thing and um, and also she finds lots of things funny um, and you know and then I got given some fa wonderful material of like. This is in this episode, right? I wake up and and have to and I don't want to give the speech. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all blurred. Okay. Um, do I fall down in this one? <laughs> do I? Okay. Um, Spoiler alert: She falls. <laughs> I know. Anyway, she gives me great stuff to do, and you know, I I kind of grew up idolizing like you know, Lucille Ball, Mary Tyler Moore, and then like Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> so somewhere in there, and I and I. You know, somewhere in there is just what I what I like, and and um, but definitely part of the language, part of the energy becomes physical too. And is that like something that you kind of found? Was that like a direction thing? Is that the? You know, it's it's I think probably why I got the part, um, just because it was kind of what she saw, you know, what she envisioned. Um, I don't know. I think. I think, again, I go back to the language. The language sort of dictated who this person was. And, um, and, and again, it's very theatrical. There's some scenes in this you'll see that are literally theatrical. There's, you know, that, and I kept thinking, this show is like a musical theater. People could break into song, and they do. <laughs> and um, so, you know, you just bring a different kind of physicality to that. 
Uh, Jennifer uh, asked a, a real spoilery question, so uh, we're answer. about the four final words without oh. which are you know these kind of legendary uh, Amy sort of uh, don't worry yeah, we're not we saying we not saying anything um, had this idea for what the how the, the series would end she wasn't on season seven so the, this was she was going to get her chance to do it and mm. she told you uh, what they were without spoiling anything can you give us um, <clears throat> Maybe like three adjectives of how Lorelai felt after hearing them. Um, I'm not even going to do that, I think, because I think it's a bad idea in case um, <laughs> there's the internet is already ruined a lot of things. So um, I, I won't necessarily talk about that. But I, but I do, I didn't know there were final four words. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, I didn't know what they were. And we just somehow never talked about it. And when she told me, I was, I was surprised, I guess. And then after a minute, it made complete sense. Mm -hmm. So th that was my reaction when, when Amy told me. But to tell you what Laurel I thought is a different, a different story. But how many did you do multiple takes of Lorelai's rea reaction? Well, I asked for it. She, Amy, had a very specific idea of what she wanted, um, and you know, it's something wonderful to have the writer directing because there's no question they know what they want. And um, I asked to give her some variations. I'm sure she didn't use them <laughs> because she knew what she wanted. But just in case, you know, I thought maybe you'll get there and I don't know, you'll feel like. But, but the whole thing this time was much more collaborative. You know, we've been friends now for a long time. When I first started, it was my first big job. And it was really fun to be able to, to say things like that once in a while, you know, like, oh, maybe, I don't know, let's try this, and, you know, and, and, and to have that kind mm -hmm. of re reception. I'm getting the sense you haven't watched these yet, have you? No. No. Will you? <laughs> Not for a long time. Um, I'm so, I'm honestly so proud of it. It was such an incredible experience. That's all I need, you know? Mm -hmm. And again, I don't, I, I think they're wonderful actors who learn a lot at, by viewing themselves. I've just learned I'm not one of them. And um, so I need some time. Like when I went back and watched the old episodes, it's long enough ago that I could be a little bit objective, but the experience was so incredible. It's for now, it's like more than I could have hoped for. Did it give you this, this like desire to like, oh, I need to play this character again. Like I want to go back for more episodes or movies. Um, there's, it gave me, um, it was incredibly gratifying at this stage. And I've had such nice opportunities. I feel fairly sure I'm not I don't want to poison any possibilities I guess but I feel fairly sure I'll never have this good a match again in terms of what I love to do what this language is and and just the aspect of putting something kind of positive and hopeful out there in the world I wasn't aware of that I wouldn't have thought of that as a young actor but now I'm it's something I'm proud of and and kind of could wouldn't want to do any other kind of thing mm -hmm. so yeah I mean I could do it every day for the end of time but then you have to consider the piece and is that good for the piece and do you start to somebody <laughs> said to me in an interview is it going to be like Christmas on Walton Mountain <laughs> <laughs> younger people you don't know what that means <laughs> The Waltons was a beloved TV show and they'd come back and do, you know, movies, perhaps, I guess this journalist's opinion was perhaps beyond the point where anybody was really... I disagree completely. Okay, they really. Amazing. <laughs> but what I love about this, I, so I think we're not there yet in terms of asking those questions, mm -hmm. really. Um, but th the this model of 90-minute episodes she wanted to do because of Sherlock and Downton Abbey and those British shows that... They do two, they do four, they do a Christmas special on Sherlock, they went back in time, you know, it could be, there's no kind of set, and on something like Netflix, there's no, um, you know, she got to make up the format of what she wanted to do, so it's possible, but I, I, I yeah, I don't know. When you have that kind of role that you feel like you connect with so strongly, I mean, here you are. You're 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 you've written a couple books. Um, you you wrote the, this uh, uh, talking as fast as I can. Someday, someday, maybe is amazing. If you haven't read uh, Lauren's book, and and you're you're uh, you optioned another. You're doing another TV thing. Um, from the other side of it, do you have that? I mean, 
as an actor, do you feel like, oh, I need to find my next role? Like I'm done. No, you don't have. No, I feel extremely fulfilled by doing this. I and and I feel like I accidentally went to writing school <laughs> between the two shows, um, and have been able to do some things on my own. You know, it's an incredible thing to be part of a team, an ensemble of an acting company. And then it's kind of been this really interesting revelation to just be in an office by myself with a computer. And um, so I don't, again, it was so, I feel like I just had the greatest meal. What am I gonna do now? Like go to McDonald's, you know? Like I, I just, you know, I, I don't, there's nothing I crave, which is a strange place to be because the way I kind of feel I got anywhere was I get to one little place and then I picture, okay, what's like the next, how can I get to the next, you know, okay, I can get one line, maybe I can get five lines, maybe I could get a, you know, very gradual. Um, and I don't, I don't have, I don't have a vision for what comes next. For all the actors in here um, who haven't given up, I, I feel like I've read over the course of, you know, years, like in saying that you were at one point um, a mascot. Yes. You um, you were like, like SAT a prep. Like the head. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you did like SAT prep, you were a waitress, like kind of like all, what, was there a moment where you almost gave up and then you were like, no, I'm gonna stick it out. I'm gonna get this job. A thousand, a thousand. I mean, every day, you know. Um, there was a very long period of time when I didn't work at all. Um, I went to, I, I got into a graduate program. Um, that was a nice sign, and but there'd been a lot of struggle before that. Then when I got out, I got a agent with a small agency. That was a nice sign, but then I didn't work for a really long time. And I kept thinking she's gonna drop me, you know, I'm not making any money. And I thought of giving up all this, I didn't have any money. You know, it's all the stuff we've all gone through. And and really, it, I started to get a little indication, um, pretty, for actors, you know, pretty late-ish. And, um, and even then, you know, so I was on a sitcom, then I was on another one. They kept getting canceled. You know, every time you raise the bar, <laughs> there's a new one to, to kind of get to. And I thought, I'm just gonna be the person. I know, in fact, I remember when I got this pilot, there was an article in like Time Magazine or, or Newsweek or something. And I, and I just flipped it open and I saw my face and I, I was like, oh, I'm in this magazine. And it was, it was an article that was something like, ever wonder why TV is the same old boring thing every year? It's, I know, it's because you, these same actors keep, it was like, it was like a little thing about like show killers. And I know, I know, which, which is one of, you know, one reason number five million thousand why I don't read anything ever, 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 um, because the good stuff will find its way to you and the bad stuff you just don't need to see. And that's, you know, harder in today's world. But um, so that was the year I got that pilot and of Gilmore Girls. And I thought oh, it'll, and then, and I write about this in the book, but then we went to Upfronts and one of the executives said, oh, your time slot. And I was like, why, what's the time slot? They said eight o'clock on Thursdays. <laughs> which again, against Friends and all these huge shows of the time, we were almost canceled. You just never know, you know? I, I do believe, because I do believe there should be enough signs that you don't feel like you're in a bad relationship <laughs> with acting, you know? Like there should be enough where you feel like the guy's calling you back, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, because otherwise, it, you start, it really can take a toll and, and there are ways to be creative that, you know, there's certain things that get validated in today's world. Uh, I don't know. Are they really the the, the best parts of us? I'm I, I'm not sure, but I I do believe because I I have some I saw friends stay longer than it was making them happy. You know, so it's just stay as long as it's making you happy. Another interesting uh, thing that I that I thought would be helpful to to actors also was someone told you. Um, I read once that someone said, "Don't take." the role of Lorelai, because you don't want to play a mom. Everybody said don't take the role of Lorelai. Every peer of mine, um, 
probably agents at the time. There was a, because IMDB didn't really exist yet, so that your age was not on anything, and you could lie about it. In fact, Bruce Fretz, I lied to you about my age. Bruce is here, who's an entertainment uh, writer. Is that the right way to say it? Okay, um, who's, a, who's a very intelligent TV writer who I also went to seventh grade with, who um, used to work for a TV guide. Okay, and you tried to get my age out of me, or you tried to get me to say it. Meanwhile, you knew because we were in seventh grade together. <laughs> and I said, like, can you just please say 30-ish? You know, so that was a big thing at the time. And everybody said, you're gonna play a mom of a teenager? That's the end. You'll never, you know, the, the, you, you can't be young and whatever ever again. And I just never, I never, that it didn't occur to me. Like, it, I just connected to it. And I thought this is fantastic, and I didn't have a kind of like vision about you know what this was going to do or not. And then the flip side of that was there a piece of advice I guess that you got that actually you listened to and you were like, yeah, that's great advice. I'm going to pass that along. Again, so much, um, you know, because on the other side of that is we 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 have our yeses and we have our noes and. I think at times I would take a job out of complete panic, not because it was right. You know, some of those failed sitcoms, I could have told you they were probably gonna fail, but I was like, oh, does somebody wants me <laughs> in a job that pays money? Like, I can't believe it. And I think you, that's, I can't dictate what that is for anyone, but I didn't, sometimes maybe I could have said no a little bit more and, and believed in myself. <laughs> but, you know, on the other hand, <laughs> On the other hand, it's tough out there, so. Um, I do want to get to some questions because yeah, you yeah, all yeah. wrote such amazing, uh, thoughtful, thoughtful questions. Um, uh, Ashley asked, was it hard not to overlap who you were in Gilmore with who you were in Parenthood? Well, yes, I think, because to me, when I read Parenthood, again, and this right or wrong, it bore no resemblance to Lorelei to me in the tone of the show and in the language. And that was another one where people were like, are you gonna play a single mom again? You know, <laughs> and, I, and I kind of thinking of that Lorelei experience, I was like, it, that doesn't matter. It's, but in a way, and I love that show, love it and had an amazing time. But all these characters we play are to some degree, and I mean stock characters in the best sense. You're gonna have your leading lady, you're gonna have your clown, you're gonna have your, you know, and, and the single mom is gonna be dealing with dating and maybe she's gonna date her daughter's teacher. I did that twice and maybe she's gonna, you know. Love some Max of the, Medina. <laughs> some, some of the, and, and Jason Ritter too, and you know, Jason but some Ritter. of the dynamics and the stories are just going to be the same. And I felt frustrated at the beginning because I was so used to playing this woman who no matter what, else was never a victim was ne you know ne didn't she she was a business owner she envisioned herself you know as a real kind of she had a lot of confidence even even though she was vulnerable and and sarah would frustrate me and so i i think i started to bring some trying to lighten it up or you know i i um so I mean, and obviously you're using yourself. It always it always overlaps to some degree, but that's, that was a little bit of that process. Mm -hmm. Marley wanted to know what characteristics do you and Laura Lai Gilmore share? Um, I just I am very verbal. I was attracted to poetry as a child. I was a uh, voracious reader and still am. Um, even though that's more sort of Rory's thing, you know, they try to give me like a magazine on set sometimes. And I was like, why can't I read books like Rory can, you know? <laughs> and um, so, uh, but generally hopeful and um, positive, I think. And I, lo I love this question from Taylor Weinstein said, what was your biggest pinch me, this can't be real moment you had while working on this show? <sighs> well, I, uh, I don't want to tell a story I've told before, but I this this was the biggest one. It was on the first day. Um, I couldn't figure out what to wear because the first days are always like you're so tense, <laughs> and and it wasn't we weren't shooting the first scene, but it was still my first day, and you know 
I always want her wardrobe to be fun and interesting and exciting, and I have great people who help me do that, but I just was fussing and I didn't like the outfit and, you know, and, and um, they brought in like a whole rack of stuff and I was trying things and pulling things off the thing. And then finally the, they said, you know, we're ready. So I was like, oh, okay, fine. I'll just wear this blue blouse and, and I put it on, it was kind of baggy. And so my um, onset dresser just kind of, you know, she pinned it in the back and you're like running. I got on my bicycle and like going to set. And, and I got there and there was something like kind of bugging me in the back. And I was like, hey, Sasha, is there like a pin here or something? And she came and she said, oh, we didn't take the tag out. So she pulled the tag out and the whole day went by, you know, long, long day. And at the end of the day, this is a woman I've been working with the whole time on the show. And she knocks on the door and she said, I, I have something I want to show you. I, I, I kind of can't believe it. And I was like, what? And she hands me this thing and it was the tag from the shirt, which is a Diane von Furstenberg shirt. Why, why am I plugging <laughs> Diane von Furstenberg? <laughs> and the shirt has a name and the shirt is called the Lorelei 2. Now, it's one letter spelled differently, but it's, I was, I, I, I was just like, what are the odds? And it's the Lorelei 2, 2. I couldn't believe it. And I, I put it up, I, you know, and the whole thing already felt kind of like magical and surreal. And I put it up on the wall above the like sink in my dressing room because to me it was, it was so many things, but it was just a reminder, like, value, you know, this is a big, cool thing to get to do and, and uh, you know, let it be, you know, sometimes you just luck into some, it's like a relationship, like sometimes you just, wow, it's all going great, I don't know, you know, and, and that was a big how, sign. <laughs> how was it walking away this time? Oh, it's always just a misery. I mean, it's always, the, the day is longer than they thought it was going to be, and the party started, but you can't get there. And, you know, I'd, I'd been so emotional the whole time that I was kind of like, huh, all right, well, I don't have any tears left. I, uh, you know, to pass the hush puppies, I, you know, you just kind of go numb. It's just like an odd, um, it's, it's hard to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. And I think as performers, we, we say hello and goodbye all the time and you make these strong connections and then, and then they're gone, you know? And I mean, this is a group of people I will probably be joined with in, to some way, in some ways for a long time, but um, yeah, it was n not eventful. <laughs> yeah, I, um, there was, uh, Shelly asked about you and Alexis uh, developing uh, chemistry both initially and and finding it now, and we talked about that a little now. And just another plug for your book, I thought it was really interesting in the in in your book when you talk about that you were both cast like they didn't. It wasn't like oh, let me test Lauren with like five young you know young there potential. There was no wars. time. And here's one of the things about saying no. Although I was helped in saying no, I was attached to another show. And they wouldn't, I got sent the script, um, but they wouldn't see me on it because I was attached to another show. And they kept auditioning, they kept auditioning, they kept auditioning. And then finally they, they decided to bring me in anyway. And then I didn't want to come in because I was like, why, why am I going to go audition for a job I can't even do? And the other show was maybe going to get canceled, but they weren't sure. And I was in here, I forget where I am, I was in New York and doing some, I don't know, just the whole, it, the way it worked out was, it wasn't until a couple of days or a week or something before they needed to start shooting, which happened to also be my birthday, um, that they were like, we don't care, we'll fly her in, just come, you know, they didn't have anybody, they, they hadn't found the, you know, and so that's, boy, if you can ever just walk in at the end <laughs> and <laughs> close, be that, Picture who closes, like, because, you know, they'd already seen all the people they wanted to see. Because there's a real thing they do with process here, you know, if you, like, go in first sometimes, they're like, you're the most amazing person we've ever seen. However, we're going to need to see 37 other people just to be sure, you know, and you can't time that either, you know, but, but it just happened to kind of um, work that way. And Alexis was already in Toronto. We shot the pilot in Toronto. She was already there. So they couldn't read us together. Um, so we met in Toronto, like the night before we <laughs> played mother and daughter for 75 years. I know. I and know. Did, did Amy like sit the two of you down about like, all right, get to know each other real fast? No, I mean, Alexis was 18 or 19 then. 
it, she'd never had a speaking role in anything. She'd done a little tiny bit of, of modeling and, you know, she was more discovered in a way. And she always tells the story when she came in, she was sick. You know, she's very naturally sh quiet or shy or a person, but she was sick that day and she had to kind of pr project a little bit <laughs> more. And, um, you know, it, that was sort of a, a fluke. Um, but, you know, we just, we can, so there was no like, what's your craft mm -hmm. and how are we going to do this? You know, there was none of that kind of thing. I, I could just see she was like, I don't know what this is, you know, <laughs> and especially, can you imagine as your first job blah, 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 and walking and talking and things. So, you know, and I've, I've said this before, but I would just clamp us together because if we didn't, you know, if we didn't land on our mark, we we're going to do it seven more times. And, and also she was lovely and we always connected and we're really kind of yin and yang, you know, um, personality wise, but I think it's quite similar in, in who we are <laughs> sort of inside. And, and so I just clamped her to me and, and, um, you know, and here we are. <laughs> and here we are. Well, I, Lauren, thank you so thank much. You so much. Um, this was such a pleasure. I, like all of you need, if this is just, like the first one you've seen, like I, I have your plans for the rest of the night, like go home and watch the other three because it's, uh, it's wonderful, these movies and, and everything you've done. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Me. Thank you guys so much.